Do you know that interest rates are dropping and dropping really fast? You haven't seen? The latest T-bills hover around 3% only. Think back 6 months ago, you would realize that T-bills used to give around 3.8-3.9%, correct? And right now, 3%, that's barely covering inflation. So I'll keep tabs on the latest T-bills and I do forecast for 2025, T-bills would likely be below 3% already by then. So where to park your cash? Should you go towards fixed deposits? Well, what I've realized is many summary tables haven't updated the changes that banks are giving for fixed deposits and I want to share them with you in this episode. Hi guys, welcome back. Without further ado, let me show you the latest offerings which is accurate as of 20th October just in case you like guarantee, just in case you don't want to take risks which I'll advocate along the way. But never mind, let me show you where to park your monies. The first is by Hong Leong Finance. You will realize that the latest 6 month, 7 month rate is 2.7% only. This has been cut already. If you're willing to go up to more than 50%, you can get 2.8%. If you want to go for longer term, for 11 months, the max you can get is 2.65%. Wow, that's a bit sad. Because I thought smaller finance companies need to compete and give better rates, but this is really what's offered right now. Don't anchor your expectations like 2023. Moving forward, if you really need guarantee, you might want to secure 11 months instead of 7. But at this rate also, I think what Mary Bank is giving, which is what I can show you over here, at 2.7% is not too bad. I've been a user of Mary Bank. Mary Bank is a digital bank with the same parent company as Shopee. And if you'd like to sign up for your own Mary Bank account, look for links below. You will get a $10 referral code once you activate your Shopee account. 2.7% flexible, but doesn't beat inflation. Huh? So what are other offerings on the market? Let's look at smaller players again. RHB, 2.8% for 3 months, but never mind, don't look at 3 months already. It's really not worth the effort. So let's look at 6 months. If you are premier banking, 2.85%. Slightly better than Hong Leong Finance. But for 12 months, the best you can get is 2.6%. Actually speaking about 2.6%, recently Grayson has a 2-year guaranteed endowment at 2.6%. I think if you want to guarantee yourself longer term interest rates, 2 years, 2.6% is actually not too bad relative to the other offerings. Don't base it back on one year ago. Base it back to before COVID period. I didn't realize 2.6% for 2 years endowment, still not too bad. Let's move on to other smaller banks in Singapore to try to find good interest rates for you. This by SBI, State Bank of India. Mean deposit 50k if you're looking for large sums. 6 months, 2.9%. So this is one of the best, especially for 50k. I still have something better to show you, so continue watching. But the only thing is SBI is not too familiar with many of us. But again, this is SDIC guaranteed. Bank deposits always SDIC. 12 months, don't bother. I think 2.5%, you've seen better offers already. So how to beat this? Let me show you DBS online fixed deposit, which I parked my own debt, 19999 I don't know what's DBS strategy. They have kept this consistent. And because they are aiming for less than 20,000, they have not yet moved the needle. So suddenly 3.2% is the best you can find out there. 12 months, 3.2%, 24 months, 3.2%, you can even do 60 months, 3.2% if you want. But again, that's max of 20,000. And I do believe if interest rates continue to drop, DBS might change this. So if you're keen, as always, look for DBS online. The sign up is actually very simple. With that, let me show you next what is the best offer for six months, especially if you want big amounts. And it comes from May Bank. I hope by the time you're viewing this, it's still available because six months, 3.1% from my search is unbeatable. Mean placement, 20,000 in iSavvy time deposit. I hope there's no funny terms and conditions because myself, I'm not a consumer fixed deposit. I know they have other accounts that are step up or salary crediting, which I'm not showing you over here. I'm just trying to filter the plain vanilla one so that just case your parents want or you're saving up for a wedding or you're saving up for renovation and you die die one guarantee, then yes, six months, 3.1 is indeed the best. In fact, 9 months, 2.9 is also the best. And my guess is Maybank hasn't yet reduced that. That's why it's slightly above market. Talking about reduction, let me share with you my forecast coming up. You know, UOB1 account has cut interest rates 6 months ago. Back in April, they were the first of the 3 banks to cut their flagship UOB1 account in terms of the interest it provides. And not just that, 
to qualify for the highest tier, they bump it up to 150,000. Even if that change, your bill account is still one of the best, if not the best, for high yield savings account. But I have private clients also, they are asking me whether we should move some of the funds out because they don't want to hit the highest tier. But my point is, UOB has moved, but interestingly, DBS and OCBC have not moved their high yield savings account rates. When will they do so? Let me know in the comment section below because I think start of next year, I would guess that they will have to reduce that. I am a user of OCBC 360, not maximizing it fully because I'm deploying a lot of markets. But if interest rates continue to drop, they have to cut these rates to protect their own banking margins. So again, expect interest rates to be cut across fixed deposit and high yield savings account. So you may have this question. Hey Josh, where will money flow to? Or where should I start parking my money out? This is going to be what everybody is thinking. That is why over in this analyst report, they are suggesting that REITs are going to see a very big tailwind coming up. 4 to 7 billion of potential inflows may be coming into REITs, assuming only 5 to 8% of T bills are reinvested. Well, so if there's capital of 4 to 7 billion looking for REITs, and not just REITs, high dividend stocks, bank stocks also included, ST Engineering, SGX, all these, I've covered in a previous video above, top 10 dividend stocks. But the point again is, with close to 87 billion in liquidity from retail investors, assuming conservative 5 to 8% is deployed into risky assets like REITs, that could mean a 4 to 7 billion invested into S REITs. They believe that larger cap S REITs like CICT, Maple Tree Industrial Trust, Maple Tree Pan Asia, Ascendus will likely benefit because they are more household names and I guess also they are a lot more solid fundamentally. I'm also more happy to recommend them to my private clients and I believe that their dividends could grow especially when interest rates start to tail down and their interest costs starts to become lesser resulting in more dividends per unit. You know investors are like that. Where is the next opportunity? Oh now interest is dropping. Let's move the money out. It's a bit like there are these special flocks of birds, blue mountains in Australia, white color parrots or kakadus. There were hundreds of them in that small park. Why were they all there? Because there was food, correct? And when some early birds come, they start to feast and the rest hear the success and start to come. The later you come, the less remaining food there is. And that's why I guess they're saying early bird catches the worm. If you want to be an early bird on where to invest, let me invite you to Josh Tan Meet. And it's coming on 3rd of November. Hi guys, I'm here at beautiful Esplanade to share with you this upcoming event, Josh Tan Finance Meet 2024. It'll be on 3rd of November, which is Sunday, and I've booked this restaurant entirely for us to have lunch. So if you're looking for ideas, where to deploy your monies, where to get good returns for 2025, let me answer them with my presentation coming up in this event itself. And as always, if you have personal finance questions that you have always wanted to ask me, there's a chance that we can mingle and let me answer them for you. Thank you again for supporting the channel. Look for links below to sign up. Tickets are going fast and I hope to see you there. Now speaking back to the point on money's moving out from T-bills and fixed deposits into riskier assets for dividend income. You may have this question also. Josh, I don't believe that's true. I myself, I don't have that much like you. I'd like to show you some poll results that I've put up on my Telegram group and my YouTube premiere. You would see that 10 to 15% of people have their majority in cash. Majority. So really, there are some who have a lot of cash that will move out or will get disillusioned when interest rates starts to cut. If you're ahead of them in the investment curve, you will benefit. Let's now look at other investment opportunities that are non-guaranteed by SDIC, but also guaranteed by the issuer themselves. Popular ones include SAIF, who have their guaranteed plans. You would see that 3 months, 3.15% only, 6 months, 29 and 12 months, 2.8%. This is guaranteed by SAIF, not SDIC. Again, confirming that interest rates across the boards are coming down. What about chocolate finance? Previously, 4.2%, but moving from 1st November onwards, 3.6% for the first 20,000. Also not guaranteed by SDIC, but guaranteed by chocolate finance themselves. If you're looking to sign up, their platform is actually quite easy to use and I'll leave links below with my referral code that you can benefit from also. But again, these are short-term saving solutions. I've always promoted longer-term ones. That's why I've always been a fan of Singapore Savings Bonds. Hopefully, you have purchased Singapore Savings Bonds that are earlier issues that give you 3, 3 plus percent. If you have, leave in the comment section. And before I forget, smash on a subscribe because if there are new updates coming up from next month, Singapore Savings Bonds, I hope to update you over here. 
There is a reason. I believe Singapore Savings Bonds for this November issue is not looking very attractive at all. Let's recap, 2.25% for one year. On a 10-year average, 2.56%, barely beating CPF OA rates. The reason I'm saying it's not attractive is because I suspect for the December 2024 issue, based on the US 10-year yield, it may be a better offer actually. So I'm suggesting for private clients to skip it. The next one could be 2.3-2.4%, which is marginally better. And on a long-term 10-year rate, expecting 2.6-2.7% average yield. Good as an emergency savings vehicle, but not fantastic as a wealth vehicle. Investing is still the best place to build your wealth. And speaking to you, if you like a full retirement-based planning work, look my links below. I do look at finance holistically, planning how you can build your retirement income streams and secure your passive income. Thank you for watching right at the very end. With that, let me introduce you to one of my previous videos which relates to this. My net worth at age of 40. I walk the talk and show how I move a lot into investment assets. There are ups and downs, but over a long period, you would realize it grows wealth. I wish that for you also, and I hope to see you there. Take care as always. Goodbye.